Hi there, my name is Charles Field. I'm a rig welder from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And today I'm going to be doing a voiceover, a director's cut for a particular welding video. This welding technique, um, I always refer to it as the looking through the gap technique, uh, was taught to me in 2011 by my welding piping superintendent at a pipe fabrication shop that I had worked at. Uh, his name was Mike Ho, and he taught me this particular technique, and um, it's basically reshaped the way I TIG weld, and um, it's really helped me with uh, nickel alloys, stainless alloys, especially leading into uh, titanium, uh, leading into, uh, you know, like mirror welding, uh, boiler welding, and, um, you know, just being the guy that is counted on uh, to do the very difficult uh, welds. So with this particular technique, always have the fill metal on, uh, if you can see the tack there, always have the fill metal close to you, uh, bracing against the tack. Use the tack as your uh, pivot point. Uh, it just helps to stabilize everything. If you do not have a tack, uh, one particular thing they can do is use uh, aluminum foil tape or even masking tape, tape it across the joint, take the filament metal and poke it in the hole and use that to help you stabilize your filament metal as you continuous feed into the uh, weld puddle. With carbon steel, it'll be more of a continuous feed. Uh, when you remove the uh, tip of the filament metal away from the inert gas, uh, as there is no inert gas internally uh, being purged on carbon steel, um, you might uh, start introducing oxides uh, as you oxidize the uh, tip of the fill metal. So with this particular carbon steel piping and this particular technique on this carbon steel, I'm using a continuous feed technique. If you're using, uh, say, a stainless nickel alloys, duplex, super duplex, titanium, uh, which will have an inert gas purging, then you can use other techniques, continuous feed technique, a dab technique, break surface tension technique, or other techniques that manipulate the um, the addition of uh, of uh, deposition of metal. For the bottom quadrant, uh, from six o'clock to uh, three o'clock, I'll be welding on that side of the pipe. So I. Basically, whenever you weld, um, to make yourself better and more proficient um, as you progress in your welding career, uh, you always want to, every single pipe that you come up to, will always have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Um, a lot of welders will only use their dominant hand, and um, there are times where they have to use their other hand, and they struggle because they do not have the practice with it which you want to start from the very beginning when you uh, TIG weld in general. You want to start from the very beginning, weld with both hands. And um, it actually changes your perspective and your line of sight and how you view the weld. Um, if you, say, are struggling with your right hand to get uh, a certain kind of buildup or you're, you're just struggling uh, with one hand in general, uh, you can switch to your other hand, say your left hand, and um, your line of sight changes, your view of the well changes, you see things very differently. So it's very important to use both hands uh, at all times on the piping. So you notice I use, I switch from left hand side, left hand, right hand side, right hand. When I weld the bottom quadrant, I'm always on that side of the pipe. When I weld the top quadrant, it is much easier to pull the weld puddle up towards yourself. Therefore, I switch to the, to the other side of the pipe and I can weld from 6 or 9 o'clock up to 12 o'clock. With this particular technique, I'll have attack at 12 o'clock, attack at 9 o'clock, and attack at usually about 7 o'clock. There is no attack at uh, 3 o'clock. I can weld from 6 o'clock up to about 2 o'clock on the, standing on that side of the pipe. I can cut the tack out at 12 o'clock. I can thin the tack out or the last deposited stop at 2 o'clock. I can go on onto the other side of the pipe 
and I can pull the weld puddle up towards me 2 o'clock to 12 o'clock. I can take the grinder, I can cut out the tack at 9 o'clock, cut out the tack at 7 o'clock, I can feather the start at 6 o'clock, feather the stop at 12 o'clock, and uh, if I want to weld in one go, I can either, I can really stand on either side of the pipe really, or I can stand on the opposing side of the pipe and reach over the pipe and weld from 6 to 12, or else I can stand on that side of the pipe, do the bottom quadrant from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and then go to the other side of the pipe. But you see me jumping around from side to side of the pipe, and it's it's due with uh, line of sight, uh, how easy it is to do uh, the particular kind of welding, my placement, body positioning. At the bottom of the pipe, I use the 532 film metal. I get a little bit more build up. And I'm showing in this uh, video here, uh, the left hand side and the right hand side. Uh, this is a continuous feed technique. Carbon seal, like I said a little bit earlier, you do not want to use a dabbing technique because there's a no inert gas internally inside the pipe. And uh, every time you, rem you remove the tip of the fill metal away from the well puddle, it oxidizes in the presence of the atmosphere, which you end up reintroducing to your well puddle and it's basically adding um, oxides to your well puddle. I'm showing I believe the top quadrant and when I did switch to a 1 8 fill metal uh, I believe this is still the left hand side that would be the top and that'd be about the tie-in uh, we are now going to the uh, right hand side this would be the upper uh, top quadrant of the right hand side In this particular technique, there are actually many, many particular techniques that I can use. Uh, say, looking through the gap technique, uh, you know, uh, we should be looking inside the pipe, which is what I'm doing here. You are looking inside the pipe, you're using depth perception, and you can see the puddle internally inside the pipe. Uh, there's a line of sight technique where you're looking at the leading edge, you can see the external and internal leading edge of the puddle, and you're pulling the puddle up towards you. That's another technique for a line of sight. Or you could stand on the outside of the pipe. Uh, and you can always look at the, uh, well, the outside of the well puddle or even just the, the leading edge, but on the outside of the puddle. Uh, so there's different line of sights, um, different techniques. You can walk the cup on this technique. Um, there's many, essentially many de different techniques a guy can use. If a person uses this particular technique, um, they will better themselves. And uh, that's the purpose of uh, showing and uh, introducing this particular technique to uh, other welders. Um, once they start getting used to it, they'll realize, hey, this is a very good technique and uh, it's uh, something very, very useful. You can follow us at the uh, WeldTube uh, Instagram account, social media accounts, and uh, myself at uh, Filderez on Instagram. Thank you.